Just in the last half hour, Iraqi officials said a new airstrike killed five Iranian-backed militia near Baghdad. It's unclear if the U.S. was behind this new strike. It comes as the Pentagon sends 3,500 additional troops to the Middle East. In a new statement from Iran's supreme leader, he calls for, quote, forceful revenge for the killing of General Qasem Soleimani, who many in Iran see as a national hero. Soleimani was killed last night in a U.S. drone strike at the Baghdad airport in Iraq ordered by President Trump. Today, the president says he did so to stop a war. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel, but we caught him in the act and terminated him. The foreign minister of Iran is now accusing President Trump of ordering the strike as a political move to distract from impeachment. And many in the U.S. believe Soleimani's death could put the lives of thousands of American troops already in the Middle East at risk. We have a team of reporters covering all angles of the story tonight. Scott Thuman has reaction from Congress. But we start with Como's Keith Eldridge live at Joint Base Lewis McCord with how local forces are preparing. Keith? They definitely are preparing for this. They've been preparing all along. They say they are ready to go. Now, we're here at McCord Field, the air base behind us here. We're here because even though they won't say for sure because of security reasons, it's entirely possible some of the C-17 cargo uh, aircraft you see there based here are already helping to fly in troops and materials to assist in the current actions in Iraq. Now, more urgent concern is the status of the 500 National Guard troops who left in September and are right now in Jordan, assisting the Jordanian military along the border with Syria. We were there for their deployment ceremony. National Guard says it is basically a training mission and there are no current orders to shift them to the effort in Iraq. But Baghdad is only 500 miles away. Well, that's the distance from Seattle to Boise and a National Guard commander and the troops themselves say they're prepared for anything. Yeah, I mean, they, they operate under fairly strict force protection guidelines and they're ready to execute whatever they need to do. But again, they're in a situation that's largely a training mission and we have no indicators at all that that's going to change anytime soon. If I get called in, I get called in and I'm going to put my best effort into do whatever I can to stop the threat. But again, no change in plans yet. And with the soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord, we know of no call up yet either. The soldiers here have been heavily involved in previous wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, but we're told the soldiers based on the East Coast tend to be the first ones to go to the Middle East. But uh, we need to note that soldiers come and go all the time to all parts of the world from here in the Washington State bases. Now, depending on how long the and how big this conflict gets, there once again could be heavy involvement with bases here around the state, including the uh, jets at Whidbey Island Naval Air Station, the ships and subs at Naval Base Kitsap and Naval Station Everett, and also the refueling tankers at Fairchild Air Force Base in Spokane. And coming up tonight at 6, you're going to hear from an, an Iraq war vet and his take on everything that's going on now. Live at Joint Base Lewis McCord, Keith Eldridge, Como News. We'll see you at 6, Keith. Thank you very much. Today we spoke with the University of Washington professor who is an expert in both the history and politics of the Middle East. We asked him his thoughts on the killing of Iranian Major General Soleimani, and who the professor says is the second most important person in Iran. It is representing the Iranian government. So it's an attack on the Iranian government. So I'm concerned about the long-term uh, consequences of this. You know, I, Professor Kasaba is also the director of the Henry M. Jackson School of International Studies at UW. A live look now at the U.S. Capitol where a fight over President Trump's decision over that deadly drone strike is growing tonight. Sinclair's chief political correspondent Scott Thuman shows us the struggle over who should be making these critical decisions. On Iran's streets, chants of death to America and vows for revenge for the U.S. airstrike that killed their top military commander, Qasem Soleimani. Now, serious concerns over retaliation, even a war. And on Capitol Hill, arguments that Congress should have been better informed and had a say. This action may well have brought our nation closer to another endless war. I recommend that all senators wait to review the facts and hear from the administration. While the airstrike was prompted by word of a supposedly imminent threat to Americans, and after an Iranian-backed raid on the U.S. Embassy in Iraq, the complaints here at home over President Trump's decision-making process and questions of preparedness. The cyber attack is inevitable. An attack on an embassy, virtually inevitable, and we need 
to have a plan for how we will respond. But even as top Democrats were complaining about not being kept in the loop, news broke of another major development, 3,000 additional U.S. troops being sent to the Middle East. There's a real difference between sending 30,000 troops somewhere, in which I believe you do need Congress's approval, versus doing something that requires real-time action that's limited in scope. Though not everyone feels the president should have to seek permission. I'm not one of these people that think that every time the president does something, he has to come to Congress and have a floor debate. If we have a floor debate about whether to kill Soleimani, we're not going to be able to kill Soleimani. Senator McConnell said the administration is meeting with top lawmakers today and arranging a classified briefing for all senators sometime next week. On Capitol Hill, I'm Scott Thuman. We'll continue to monitor the situation in Iran. We're also hearing from local law enforcement and security on how they're preparing for any possible threats to Seattle. What they're saying coming up on Como News at 5 o'clock. Tonight, the question is not if, but how Iran will respond to a U.S. airstrike that killed that country's top general, Qasem Soleimani, while he was in Baghdad. Iran's foreign minister called the U.S. a bully and a lawbreaker. And on the streets of Iran, memorials have taken shape for the general. This move by the Americans was a cowardly terrorist action. Today, President Trump spoke about his decision, saying he ordered the airstrike not to stop a, to stop a war, not to start one. The U.S. official says there is evidence that Soleimani was plotting attacks on American diplomats and troops across Lebanon, Iraq, and Syria. Back in Washington, D.C., this is a live look at the Capitol right now. Lawmakers agreed that Soleimani was a threat, but are split about how the president handled the situation. The president's decision may add to an already dangerous and difficult situation in the Middle East. No man alive was more directly responsible for the deaths of more American service members than Qasem Soleimani. The Pentagon is now sending more troops to the region. 3,500 soldiers from the 82nd Airborne, based at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, will be in Kuwait as early as this weekend. Major cities across the country aren't taking any chances after Iran vowed to take revenge for the airstrike. In New York City, security will be deployed in strategic locations throughout that city. And what about here in Seattle? From the airport to the ferries, we're being told the city leaders and police are on alert. Combo's Tammy Matassa is live at the SeaTac to tell us about their efforts. Tammy? Eric, well, right now it's about vigilance and preparation. Here at SeaTac Airport, officials tell me safety is the number one priority. In fact, we've seen a lot of officers walking around the airport with canine units. And I'm also told a lot of efforts are going on behind the scenes. From the air on the ground and in the water. Seattle is on alert in light of Iran vowing severe revenge after a targeted U.S. drone strike in Baghdad killed its powerful military commander, General Qasem Soleimani. If we're going to get in a fight, let's take the fight to them, right? At SeaTac Airport, some travelers are concerned about the threat but remained confident in our law enforcement and military. We have family members that are serving in the military and we have full confidence in our military, but hopefully it doesn't lead to any escalation. Officials say the Port of Seattle Police, SPD, and the state ferries are all working closely with Homeland Security and the FBI. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin says the Joint Terrorism Task Force has briefed city leaders and preparation is paramount. We have no credible threats of anything against the city of Seattle, but obviously it's a target. There's many high-value targets here in the city, so we will continue to work closely with the FBI and other federal authorities to make sure that we're prepared. Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best also tweeted we're closely tracking reporting out of Baghdad regarding the killing of the IRGC general. There are no known specific threats to Seattle. We're staying apprised and in communication with our federal law enforcement partners. Anybody can strike and anybody can come after us and it's happened before and I'm probably pretty sure it'll happen again. Around Seattle's iconic landmarks, some families are more cautious though they're not letting the threat disrupt their lives. I can't live in fear. I mean, I could walk across the street in two minutes and get hit by a bus. So every day you're just, you're thankful and you hug them and you love them and you hope for the best. Back out here live again, authorities saying safety is the number one priority. A lot of travelers did tell me it is taking a little bit longer to get through TSA. So definitely you want to plan accordingly if you're coming to the airport. Back to you.
place where we will see the impact of the deadly military attack is at the gas pump. Oil prices are already on the rise, and that means higher gas prices. Initially, there shouldn't be a drastic change since oil production is strong here in the U.S. and other parts of the world. Right now, the average price here in the state of Washington is $3.15 per gallon. This is a live look at Victor Steinbrook Park near Pike Market tomorrow afternoon. It's expected to be filled with protesters who want U.S. troops to leave Iraq. The demonstration was planned before last night's drone strike, but after the violent protests outside the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad earlier this week. The protesters say that too many lives have been lost since American troops were sent to Iraq and other countries in the Middle East decades ago. And here on the Como Live Desk, several local lawmakers sounding off on the death of Qasem Soleimani. Uh, Denny Heck just saying this a few minutes ago on Twitter. We want to make sure you know we're staying on top of this. He's saying this marks a steep escalation and tensions between the U.S. and Iran. The administration has yet to articulate a comprehensive plan or fully explain why this strike was necessary. Then he put out a statement. At the same time, Governor Jay Inslee, he's also been tweeting quite a bit about this. He put this out probably two minutes ago. Says we cannot allow our country to become embroiled in yet another unnecessary war in the, in the Middle East. And put out a statement with several reasons uh, why he believes that should be the case. We're still watching for any developments out of Iran tonight. Right now, thousands of U.S. troops are on their way to the Middle East. The Iranian government is promising retaliation after a U.S. drone strike killed a top Iranian general. We're also watching economic impacts from that general's death. Analysts say oil prices could skyrocket. Futures for Brent crude oil jumped more than 3% today to more than $68 a barrel. And U.S. oil spiked almost 3% to more than 63 a barrel.